going out on the snake corner and, um, I normally ask people when they do see a snake that they make sure the snake can't escape. It's no good, I'm going there and then they get there and the snake is gone. So, if the snake is in the house, they need to enclose it, make sure that the snake can't come underneath the gap of the door. So, they just push a towel in over there. And um, windows must be closed so the snake doesn't slip out from the room through a window. So yeah, that's um, important for us. The dogs must be kept away. It's always a problem. Dogs and snakes don't mix. So I want to make sure that that is uh, also adhered to. And then uh, people must watch the snake. And if it's not in a room, um, then um, we want to. Uh, Make sure if it's outside in the garden that they are um, watching the snake. So there must be somebody there that is watching the snake. The basic equipment that I have here is a, uh, a snake hook, a snake tongue goggles in case it's something that spits and a snake holding tube. So I'll just put goggles on in case it's something that's going to spit. So just to make sure. the snake it's a snout of cobra I don't need that The, the snake's common name is Snouted Cobra, Afrikaans Vipneus Cobra. They used to call them Egyptian Cobras. It was thought that it was the same species of snake that occurred from Egypt right down to South Africa. But um, Don Broadley of Zimbabwe did some uh, work on these snakes and um, it was then described as a new species. Not the Egyptian Cobra, but called the Snouted Cobra. First thing you'll notice with this snake is it has a dull skin on the back. It's a very easy method of IDing these snakes. If you look at some of the other cobras, they are very shiny, like the Cape Cobra, a very shiny snake. This one is dull on the back. This snake has um, scales underneath the eye, suborbital scales, that prevent the upper lip scales of touching the eye. So these cobras can grow over three meters in length, so it's the largest cobra we have in uh, South Africa. The snakes eat anything that they can find and uh, one of their main items of food, apart from rats, mice, uh, frogs, lizards and other snakes, especially pufferets. So they're the main feeder of pufferets. 
that even tackle uh, small monitor lizards. So they are catholic in their taste, it doesn't matter. Warm blooded, cold blooded, they eat it. It's a non spitting cobra, so I don't have goggles on right now. You can see the snake making its hood here. Um, the hood is to make the snake look bigger than he really is, and that intimidates the would be attacker and then he thinks no, this thing is too big for me I will never be so you see the snake coming towards me all the time not that he wants to attack me it's just that he's seeking a place to hide if I get up and just move out of the way the snake is not going to attack me he's just going to go the direction he wants to go the belly of the snake is a shiny belly um, it can be plain yellow or very mottled like you see this particular snake sometimes the belly is dark also the venom of the snake is a uh, neurotoxic venom the venom attacks the nervous system at the neuromuscular junction and uh, you get paralysis and so a bite from the snake will cause a progressive weakness syndrome I want to show you another feature of this snake doesn't like that so he just bit the snake tom right, so the feature I'm going to show you is these uh, small scars around the eye there are four cobras in Africa that have them these snakes are closely related so the one I'm holding here is the snouted cobra it's got scales Leafy eye that prevents the upper lip scale of touching the eye. These are called upper labial scales. The upper labial scales do not touch the eye. In the snouted cobra, also in the Anchitas cobra, which is a close relative, also in the Egyptian cobra, and the next one is the Senegalese cobra. So all these snakes have that feature small scales around the eye, and it prevents the up and lay your scale of touching the eye. As I said, this is a non spitting cobra. So, cobras have pit stump fangs. The fangs are hollow like hypodermic needle, and it's, but they are quite short. Often, these snakes, when they uh, bite and they're very angry, will bite and hold on to chew to get to them. And you can see the snake's length. The snake is probably about a 1.5 meter snake. And as I said, these snakes can grow to 3 meters in length. The snout of cobras will mate in uh, early spring, so in southern Africa. By September, these snakes will be following the uh, pheromone trails of the females. And the male will find the female and then mate with her. Then they part their ways. And once they've parted their ways, about two months after mating, the female is going to be ready to lay a clutch of eggs. These snakes only lay from uh, 12 to 18 eggs at a time, sometimes more, depending on the size of the female. The female will go underground, down her burrow, and uh, underground she is going to then deposit the eggs, and uh, then she leaves. Those eggs are then left in the environment underground. And about two months later, the eggs will be fully developed and the little snake will be ready to leave the egg. Those snakes will have a little egg tooth on the tip of the snout. It's a small, sharp, uh, triangular shaped egg tooth. It sticks to the snout. They use that egg tooth to slice through the egg shell. The Shells of snake eggs are not hard like bird eggs, they are soft shells like leather roller. And so that snake will then use the egg tooth to make a slip through the egg shell. The snake pops its head up, starts breathing fresh air. And what happens then, on the stomach over here, there is a small slit with a baby snake with an umbilical cord. It will attach the egg yolk to the stomach. 
And in the next three to four hours, the snake absorbs that egg yolk into the stomach. And then it leaves the egg and goes on its way. Now the parent snake, as I said, is no longer around. She laid the eggs two months or so before the time, before they hatch. So she's no longer around. So the baby snake then just goes on its way and fends for itself. It needs to find its own food. There's no parental care with snakes. You can see two little um, bumps in the mouth here. So that's where the fangs are situated. There is um, there's a small bit of tissue around the fang. Right, it keeps the fang moist. When the snake bites, the tissue just pushes up and the fang penetrates into the tissue. In the, in the bottom of the mouth here, you can see there is an opening there. That opening is the end of the windpipe. It's got a valve, now it's closed. So that's how the snake breathes. When it swallows prey, that will extend out of the mouth to allow the snake to breathe while it's swallowing its prey. When the mouth closes, that seals to the top of the roof of the mouth, connecting the nostril, there's a nostril there and a nostril there, connecting the nostrils to the windpipe. And so when the snake closes the mouth, it breathes air through the nostrils. When it swallows, the end of the windpipe, as I said, will then open and close as it needs when it's swallowing its prey. So right now that windpipe is closed. There it's opening. You can see there it's opening. So we put the snake back in the tube and we're gonna release it. So when you capture these snakes in the domestic setting, like at people's home, um, often they don't want them to be around because they might have small children or uh, pets. And these snakes are a threat to uh, small animals and children. So we will take the snakes away to um, open areas, maybe um, farm areas where there's still bush around, and release the snakes there. And um, the snakes will then just live its life out over there, away from people. So they won't be able to harm anybody, and people won't be there to harm the snakes.
recognition and treatment of allergic reactions or how to handle dangerous snakes, this is the right place to come to. African Reptiles and Venom has been supplying snake handling and snake bite treatment courses since January 2000. And we have trained more than 35,000 people up to date. So please contact us. Visit africanreptiles-venom.co.za and I hope to see you soon.